Toothier Seventh Day Adventist, a revival of original Adventism and ancient Christianity, presents Escape for Thy Life, a program explaining prophecy. Theological issues. Rights and freedoms. Health issues. Natural disasters. religion Escape for thy life. Thank you. 
Today, we're going to be talking about the difference between a medical disease and a psychiatric disorder. You probably know someone who's been diagnosed with a mental disorder, like ADHD, bipolar, or depression. The psychiatric pharmaceutical industry says stuff like, mental illness is the same as a biological illness, like cancer or heart disease. Really? Let's take a closer look. Cancer is certainly a disease. It can be shown with blood tests to exist in the body as abnormal cell growth. Diabetes is definitely a disease. Lab tests can show the low levels of insulin, a hormone, in the blood. And heart disease is, of course, a disease. X-rays and computer images can show damage to heart muscle or block passages. So what's there to show that mental disorders are diseases? There's no blood tests, x-rays, or any medical test to show these are diseases. Whereas a doctor diagnosing physical illness can utilize many tests which confirm the presence of disease, a psychiatrist labels a person with a disorder based on a subjective checklist. Does not seem to listen. Loses things like pencils or toys. Avoids or dislikes schoolwork or homework. ADHD. Fear of social situations like a party or public speaking. Avoids social situations. Social anxiety disorder. Inflated self-esteem. More talkative than usual. Fatigue. Bipolar. Sure, people get sad, depressed, shy, anxious, hyper, or even a little wacky sometimes. But does this make them diseased like they say? So then why does the psychiatric pharmaceutical industry insist these are diseases that require treatment? Take a closer look. Have you been diagnosed with depression and struggle with sadness? Maybe you're scared of being criticized. Loss of interest. Aches and pain. I'm always thinking something terrible. Ask your gonna... doctor about effects or exile. Ask your doctor about Zimbabwe. Talk to your doctor about Zola. So talk to your healthcare professional. Talk to your doctor today. Talk to your doctor. Tell your doctor. Contact your doctor immediately. Doctor. Talk with your doctor. Over 40 years ago, leading psychiatrists met in Puerto Rico to map out their vision of the future. We see a developing potential for nearly a total control of human emotional status, mental functioning, and will to act. Their plan? To create by the year 2000 a range of psychiatric drugs regulating every aspect of human behavior. I was uh, diagnosed with uh, depression and put on Paxil. ADD, and I was prescribed Ritalin. General anxiety disorder. Prescribed Zoloft. Bipolar disorder, and I take lithium. PTSD, Zoloft. I was on Paxil. And they placed me on Zoloft. They gave me Adderall. I was prescribed Cyptimu. Tegretol. Lexapro. Debaco. Stelazine. Adderall. Concerta. Warzine. Prozac. Lorazepam. Epixol. Clonazepam. The Ritalin. Dexafetamine. Paxil. Silert. Prozac. The Adderall. Elevil. Depico, Wilbutrin, Seroquel. Etc. Etc. 100 million people worldwide are on psychiatric drugs. How did this happen? Psychiatrists convinced them they were sick. They want you to think you're diseased from birth, and that all those experiences of life, childhood and adolescence and teenage years and adulthood, and being a senior citizen, that these are all various stages of disease. Because let's face it, we've all been depressed at one time. We've all been anxious at one time. These are normal emotions that we feel. Every emotional and spiritual problem is reduced to a label. And of course, all of those diseases require pharmaceutical treatments. This is big, big business. While generating a healthy income, claiming to be medical professionals, psychiatrists will freely confess that their profession is devoid of science. We don't really have any specific blood tests or other tests that are definitive for any mental illness whatsoever. It would be neat if it would become much more scientific. Well, if you go to my office and you tell me that you're depressed, 
There's nothing and no blood sample, whatever, no tests. There are not uh, current available tests uh, to verify your diagnosis. I don't use any tests. You do not have a test to say, well, this is this disorder and this is the best medication for this disorder. For many years we thought we had the tests nailed down, but it turned out that they weren't of any value. If you don't know what's causing the symptoms, then to give somebody something to alleviate the symptoms is close to impossible. By the time a drug's approved and it hits the general population, we don't know even 50% of the side effects that are involved with that drug. And these pills cause heart attacks and liver problems and immune system problems and lots of other medical problems. So you're playing with fire. Every day, psychotropic drugs cause serious adverse reactions. And while psychiatrists and drug companies fully understand the dangers of the drugs they sell, their unsuspecting customers are left to suffer the consequences. Everything became worse. Every, uh, you know, each, each mood swing was worse. He would have chronic headaches, chronic, you know, nausea, not feeling good. She was very agitated, um, very, very jumpy. She was having horrible hallucinations. Her personality was, um, disintegrating. Once he started on that drug, he just, the cloud just stayed over him and stayed over him and stayed over him. It got darker and darker. He thought there wasn't anything worth living to kill himself. That was not Matthew. That was the drugs. At least I would like to have said, I love you. I didn't get a chance to do that. In addition to crippling scores of people daily, every month, psychiatric drugs kill an estimated 3,000. But the human devastation would never have gotten this high if psychiatrists hadn't worked hand-in-hand -hand with drug companies to promote their drugs to doctors throughout the world. Today, 70% of all psychiatric drugs are prescribed by general physicians. And how was this accomplished? Marketing. It's about creating a good story that uses science that convinces a physician to think about writing a prescription. This is not science. This is incredibly effective marketing. It has nothing to do with science. They use what I call statistical contortionism. Basically just skew the numbers, make everything look fantastic. You hide the bad numbers. They're learning every trick in the book. They're evolving into efficient marketing machines. And it's working. There's definitely an unholy alliance between psychiatry and pharmaceutical sales. That's a marriage made in heaven. They're like conjoined twins. They're joined at the wallet. And with 374 mental disorders filling psychiatry's diagnostic manual and more on the way, business is booming. Pharmaceutical companies have expanded their roster of psychotropic drugs from 44 in 1966 to 174 today. The top five psychotropic drugs combined gross more money than the gross national product of each of over half the countries on Earth. Altogether, the psychiatric industry rakes in a third of a trillion dollars a year. How could this have happened? It's a tale of deception that may be difficult to believe, but fatal to ignore. There is no denying that psychological and emotional problems, even severe mental distress, can affect most anyone. But does this mean we are all insane? What causes psychological distress? Early psychiatrists thought it was an imbalance of the humors that could only be cured by bleeding patients with knives or leeches. Other psychiatrists believed mental problems came from organs like the tonsils, the stomach, and the spleen, and cut them out. Later were attempts to alter brain function, but these efforts also failed. Today, psychiatrists tell us that the way to fix unwanted behavior is by balancing brain chemistry with a pill. Did they get it right this time? They say you have a chemical imbalance of serotonin and dopamine, but there's never been a study to ever prove that, ever. It's just been indoctrinated into the culture and television advertising to the point where people now believe it is fact. 
Despite this lack of evidence, psychiatrists will tell you that psychotropic drugs are just like mainstream medical drugs. Can this be true? The answer is that unlike a drug such as insulin that corrects a measurable and proven imbalance in the body, psychotropic medications have no visible or measurable physical abnormality to correct. Here is evidence of a bacterial infection. Here is the psychiatric disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Here is a broken arm. Here is major depressive disorder. This is a brain tumor. And this is bipolar disorder. Which raises the question, how can you medicate something that is not physically there? The answer is, you can't. And furthermore, because psychotropic drugs are specifically designed to get past the body's natural defenses and into the brain, they can upset the very delicate processes the brain needs to ensure the body runs smoothly. Every time you throw something into the system that's foreign to the system, you're creating imbalances elsewhere within the system. The body changes as a result of taking the medication, so when you stop taking the medication, the body's got to change back to the way it was before if it can, because it can't always. And in doing so, it disrupts the whole system. This is what creates the sometimes serious side effects. Paxil was the drug that gave me insomnia. I would cry very easily on it, and I completely lost my appetite within the first two days of taking it. It didn't help me study, it didn't help me do anything. I didn't even want to do work, because I was so sick. Excitements didn't help me at all. They made matters, uh, I'd say, probably like 10 times worse for me, maybe even 20. Only now, I was further impaired by the medications, and I started having car accidents. They put me on Zoloft, and it made me want to kill myself. And I realized that those drugs were just destroying me. Even when I was on them, I realized that they were destroying me. In spite of the crippling effects of their drugs, psychiatrists and drug companies have used them to create a huge and lucrative market worth billions. And they've done this by naming more and more of life's problems as medical disorders requiring psychiatric treatment. For example, shyness becomes social anxiety disorder, loss of a loved one, major depressive disorder, homesickness, separation anxiety, suspicion, paranoid personality disorder, having ups and downs, bipolar disorder, Distractibility, ADHD. This is why it is almost impossible for anyone to see a psychiatrist today and not be diagnosed with a mental illness. And a diagnosis of mental illness means psychotropic drugs. When a patient goes into a psychiatrist's office and asks for help, probably 98, 99, maybe even 99.9% .9 of people are gonna receive a medication. And these medications have been estimated to cause over 700,000 serious adverse reactions a year and 42,000 deaths. Meanwhile, the psychiatric industry rakes in a third of a trillion dollars a year. The issue isn't whether or not people's emotional problems are real. They are. What we really should be asking is, how did psychiatrists convince people that these problems were signs of mental illness? How did they use these illnesses to create a demand by doctors and the public for psychotropic drugs? And how did these drugs, with no known curative powers and a long list of side effects, become the standard treatment for every problem in life? And now in 2004, psychiatric labeling has taken on monstrous proportions. A group of psychiatrists and psychologists calling themselves the New Freedom Commission on Mental Health is seeking government-sanctioned power from the President of the United States to screen every man, woman, and child in America for these so-called mental illnesses. The screening criteria is based on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM, which we've been talking about, and will occur in all public schools, including high schools, and will occur every time an adult gets a general medical examination. Additionally, such screening is being recommended at a time when there is 
broad public concern that many of the antidepressants being prescribed for the conditions in the DSM are under federal investigation for causing suicidal reactions. A report by the New Freedom Commission on Mental Health states that mental illnesses are shockingly common but neglects to address or even mention the fact that there is no medical or scientific means by which to diagnose these so-called mental illnesses. Has your child or someone you know been falsely labeled with a mental disorder and given dangerous mind-altering drugs? If your child has been labeled with ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder, or ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, and given psychiatric drugs, there is something you should know. According to leading pediatric medical experts, these psychiatric labels have no scientific basis whatsoever. If you or your child have been abused by psychiatric treatment, call CCHR for help at 1-800-782-2878. Don't wait until it's too late. Call now, 1-800-782-2878. A public service announcement by the Citizens Commission on Human Rights and International Watchdog Group. Call 1-800-782-2878 or visit our website, cchr.org. Thank you. 